Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Open Series Season 1 Invitational in Richmond. I'm Nick Miller alongside Professor Esper Shaheen Sarani. <laughs> nice How to you see you. How you doing? I'm doing great. How you doing? Pretty good. Now, good, good. You messaged me last night. You said, I have the best control deck I have built in standard for a long time. Right. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's over the years, you know, I'm pretty stubborn. I'll play mm -hmm. Esper as the nickname shows. But this is an actual Esper deck that I think besides people in the media saying that I can only win with, this right. is a deck that anybody can win with. Not only him, but you at home. Everybody will be else. able to win with this Esper deck. Now, Absolutely. this deck has got so many new cards in it. Yeah. You told me earlier that this set has produced more control cards than any set in recent memory and just does everything you want. Let's just rattle them off. Anticipate, Slumgar Scorn, Narset, the Dragon Lord Ajutai. Yep. And that's just in the main deck. Right, right. There's way more in the sideboard. What was the card that really put this, you know, put Esper back on the map? It really was one card at a time. They announce, you know, card A, let's say it's Anticipate, and you're like, holy cow, it's a good card. I mean, Impulse, for one, one less Impulse is fantastic. It lets you hit your mana. Esper has had a hard time, controls a hard time sometimes hitting land drops, and that will be really your death knell. That will be the thing that will put the, you know, put the hurting on you. So they, um, they you know, release this card and went, oh, wow, all right, we're good. We got control cards. Mm -hmm. Then they release Ultimate Price, which is just a straight upgrade from Bob Light 99% of the time. And I hated Bob Light. It's a black, black spell. Yep. You need blue, blue so often. Yep. So now you have Ultimate Price, and that made Esper alive again. And I actually skipped the best one. Pre all this, you have Narset. Right. And on paper, Narset is good, fantastic. And in real life, Narset's even better than good, fantastic. It's the best Planeswalker I've ever seen for control deck. In standard, in their respective in standards. Standard. In their respective standards, and that's including Jason Mine Sculptor. That is a pretty strong endorsement. Of course, was the flashy card that kind of like spoiled everything. People got to see this card like, all right, how good is it? It's good. It's basically, you look at Jace from the old times, and basically you were in a field of bolts and uh, uh, Bloodbraid Elves and right. Maelstrom Pulses and Blightnings, and then it goes into Valakut, which is, it was a great card. Still fantastic. Mm -hmm. Still, you know. Obviously, the best planeswalker over all formats of all right. time, but it was fragile. This card is not fragile. This card you play, it goes to seven. My opponent last round will not attack it, of course, and he paid the price for it. Right. And once you dig through time and fork it one time or rebound it once and get four demonic tutors, you just can't lose a game. And it's just, it's baffling why the card is not getting played more. Now, uh, people on Twitter have uh, reacted to the Jace comment. <laughs> However, it's it's more of a in their respective format comment. Right. Narset does everything for control they could ever want. It protects you twice over. It yep. lets you get back into games by killing something, then killing something again with your new turn. Yep. It has an ultimate that, if used, dispatches half the decks in the format. Um, and it has six loyalty. Like. Yep. I keep looking at it, and I feel like it's a misprint, even to this day. So right. I'll stand by my comment, statement, it's the truth. Well, it's interesting because you bring up, you know, Jace was, is considered the greatest, right. but it was in a more volatile environment. Right. Whereas today, Hero's Downfall is really about the only card that just straight up one for ones it. Exactly. If they're playing black, you're out of luck. It's right. not as good, flat out. If they're not playing black, they are doomed. Right. They're, they're going to have a hard everywhere. time taking down all the loyalty. And it's almost impossible. And on camera, you guys probably saw it at home. People say, you know, well, you've only played four rounds of standard. I play tested the mess out of this deck. It's not right. like I've played four rounds of standard. Right. But it's just, it does everything you need, and it goes in the perfect curve into your dragon wing conditions. Right. Uh, the counter spell is the second best card in the deck, uh, Silinger Scorn. Uh, four spike on turns two, three, and four, and five are hard counters. Right. You don't even need a dragon. You don't need a dragon in play. You don't need a dragon in your hand. Two blue counter target spell is always going to happen on Rabble Masters, on Seeker of the Ways, on uh, the play, on uh, Outpost Siege. They are going to tap out for these cards because yep. what is their option? Are they going to say, I'm not going to play my, right. my guy, go? You know, you, you, they're going to play a spell, and if they decide to try to play around it, you dissolve them, you hear his downfall, and you open up your three slot, and then you might just have the dragon the whole time. Right. Not only if it's in your hand, but in play, the dragon is also good. So you don't have to sit there and hold back the dragons. Exactly. The, the thing that a lot of people have been talking about is that the four spike ability is just strong enough as is. Yes. You don't have to have it as the hard counter just because everyone is trying to curve out in the standard format. Exactly. I would play four spike right now if it was legal, if we didn't have these cards. Right. And it's not, I mean, I wouldn't be ecstatic about it, but this card is everything four spike ever wanted to be for a control deck. It counters early, and it's a guaranteed counter late, especially after a dig through time. You will have a dragon, and of course, Silimgur, the Drifting Death, is unkillable anyway, so you have that. Right. Interesting to bring up, like, 
other than Narset, your Planeswalkers aren't here. You don't have, you know, an Ugin that a lot of people have been using right. as their finisher. You're straight, four dragons. Four dragons. Yeah, two Salamgar, two Dragonlord of Jutai. Which one has been better for you so far? Salamgar is always going to be better just because it's so hard to kill. Mm -hmm. uh, not even hard to kill, it's impossible to kill. If you're not playing against other Crux uh, control decks, mm -hmm. then you'll win with uh, Salamgar every time. Uh, Dragonlord Ajute punishes opponents for not keeping mana open and preparing for the attack, um, which happens often. I mean, yeah. Agrodex can't afford to just say, all right, well, I need to hold my four mana open for my Stoke the Flame. Right. they got to continue to play threats, and if they do, then they're going to get dragoned. Uh, one connection with the dragon is usually good, but Salamgar and Ajute in play at the same time, creating a minus two, minus two uh, static ability is, is an, another fantastic synergy between the two cards. Not to mention, you just get all the fun combos when you get to play Crux of Fate yeah. with a dragon and playing keeping oh, yeah. around. Yeah, I'm not just, used to that. I'm not used to that. Just the too. <laughs> yes, and we needed that because Aetherling gave you that comfort where you could use Supreme Verdict and blink it, and you haven't had that for a while, but now yeah. the dragons are so good, you can just play a couple cards of Fate. Of course, you got Dissolve, you got some Utter End, Dig Through Time, you know, the most important card so you can refill. Right. Hero's Downfall is an answer. Ultimate Press, as you said, great to have back. Yes, yes. You're three and one so far. Let's talk about the sidebar. Ah, sideboard. You've got a ton, like, new cards in the main deck, even more new cards in the sideboard. This is the set for control. It was created for control. We got it all. Yep. You got Virulent Plague. Yep. Killing Spicy all the one. tokens. Yep. <laughs> you got the Dragon Lord Salumgar. You got the Command, yep. Oshitai. Yep. You got the Stratus Dancer and four in Case and Ice. Right. All new cards, talk about their applications. All right, so Virulent Plague is the fifth Drown in Sorrow. It's horrible in multiples, you mm -hmm. want one. Um, it just acts as a fantastic answer to Rabble Master, making him ineffective mm -hmm. to the definition. Horling Outburst, Raising Alarm, you can go on and on. Uh, even Elspeth uh, does nothing against you when you have that card in play. Um, the new Dragon Lord Selimgar is the best sideboarded card against every matchup. Okay. Every matchup, like Clockwork, since the beginning of Magic, they board out their removal against the control decks. Controllers bring in cards that can be removed, and you play that dance, but nobody, still nobody, yeah. they're not old enough to know the right. dance yet. So they might figure it out after game two, but they're going to get Dragon Lord Silumgird, right. and they're going to feel real silly about it. Because once you take any of the Planeswalkers, usually have a self-destruct mode. Mm -hmm. uh, Elspeth has a uh, self-destruct mode, the minus four ability. You have Ashiok kills itself. You have um, Ugin kills itself. So you can do a lot of things with Sealiant if you want to be safe, or right. you just punish them with their Planeswalker. Exactly. Uh, the Stratus Dancer acts as the negate number three. Uh, it's better than negate number three because you can play it early as a morph and a threat. Right. You can also flip it up where they can't interact with it because this is on a creature. Um, the Encase and Ice four times is the answer to not only critics of the deck when it comes to ultimate price being a weak card, but it just reinforces that idea where you're like, all right, well, I'm weak against a lot of these Abzan creatures. The Abzan creatures early on, like Rakasha, Death Dealer, yep. and uh, Fleece Man Lion, obviously cannot be ultimate priced, and they can be bottle blighted, but in case an ice times four is the balancing act. You bring right. these in, and not only does the matchup get better, it gets super easy because you have so many ways to kill their guys. Um, people complain about ultimate price, again, like it doesn't hit a lot of things, but Bob Blight didn't hit a lot of things. It right. didn't hit Siege Rhino, it didn't hit Anafenza. So, I mean, it's only really two creatures that people are complaining about ultimate price. And let me tell you, they took it away from us for a long time, a Doomblade <laughs> effect. Don't cry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Having, it's not going to be black, colorless, kill target creature. Right. It's gonna be, so there's going to be a drawback, and you can still play with these cards. Not to mention, so many cards are multicolor that touch either red or green. Right. You get your Siege Rhinos, even stuff like Butcher the Horde touching red. You can be able to control it pretty well. Four Drown of Sorrow, you gotta beat Mono Red somehow. Yeah, yeah. That's a straight Mono Red deck, and also if anyone's playing Just Guy Tokens or something like that, it's very good against them. But it's mainly for Mono Red. Right. The Negates, as you mentioned, go along with the Stratus Dancer. And then one Pearl-like Agent here in the board. You gotta play him, he's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta play him, because you don't want to be the controlled opponent that doesn't have one. You want right. to have one somewhere, but it's only boarded in against control decks. And decks where I feel like maybe they have like way too much removal for their own good, I'll bring it in there too. But uh, it's, it's one of those, can't leave home without it. All right, well you're three and one so far. The deck is awesome. It's happy to see you just so exuberant, happy about an Esper yeah. deck again. Yeah. You're here. There's a viable control deck in Standard. There is, there no. is. And it, honestly, I played control before this, even blue, black, and I did okay with it, Grand Prix and whatnot, mm -hmm. but it wasn't good. Like, right. it was okay. This deck is good in the games I've won. If you've walked by and seen them or people on camera saw them, they weren't very close. 
because once you can Narset it minus, 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 oh, yeah. you're casting way too many spells that your opponent can't deal with. Eight dig through time, pretty hard to beat. Pretty hard to beat. That was a lot of digs last round. <laughs> all right, well, thanks for sitting down with me here on the Cyborg Shaheen. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Richmond. Thanks a lot.